Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about click chemistry. Click chemistry is a reaction that occurs under mild aerobic conditions, utilizes benign solvents or no solvents at all, and requires no chromatographic purification. For this experiment, you will be combining two compounds to form a carbon-nitrogen bond, which is a reaction essential to synthetic organic chemists. Reactions that form carbon-nitrogen bonds can be accomplished by several methods. These include nucleophilic substitution, reductive amination, and the Gabriel synthesis. In addition to the organic reagents that are used in the previously mentioned reactions, there are also methods that utilize transition metal catalysts to form carbon-nitrogen bonds. The manufacture of pharmaceuticals, polymers, and other synthetic materials often rely on metal catalysts to provide these products in an efficient manner with respect to cost and waste production, which aligns with the concept of click chemistry. In this experiment, we will perform the synthesis of 1-benzyl-4-phenyl-1-H1-2-3-triazole. As shown below, to synthesize triazole, benzyl azide and phenylacetylene are reacted with each other and catalyzed by bromotristriphenylphosphine copper 1, a metal catalyst. This reaction is considered to be a click chemistry transformation as it consists of no solvent, occurs under mild aerobic conditions, and does not require chromatographic purification. Now let's start the experiment. To begin, weigh 24 mg of the catalyst bromotris triphenylphosphine copper 1 and add it to a 20 ml pre-weighed vial. Next, we are going to transfer 62 microliters benzyl azide and 55 microliters phenylacetylene to the 20 ml vial. This can be achieved by using a 10 to 100 microliter pipette. To properly use the micropipette, press and hold the plunger at the first stop. Place the tip in the liquid. Slowly release the plunger. Pause for a second and then move the tip. Insert the tip into the delivery vessel. Press the plunger to the second stop. After all the solvent is dispensed, touch the tip to the side of the vial to take out any of the remaining liquid. Then change the tip and do the same for 55 microliters of phenylacetylene. Don't forget to convert 62 microliters and 55 microliters when calculating. Add a stir bar to the vial and stir for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, measure 2 milliliters of ethyl acetate and add it to the vial. Continue stirring until the mixture is fully dissolved. The mixture is then filtered through a small column using a glass pipette. First, wrap parafilm around a glass pipette to increase the area so that the pipette can be clamped into the stand. Obtain a paperclip and unfold it. Using this unfolded paperclip, plug the pipette with cotton. Then, fill the pipette with 2 to 3 centimeters of silica gel. This is the finished setup. Filter the solution into a pre-weighed 20 milliliter vial through this plugged pipette. Rinse the column with a small amount of ethyl acetate. If the filtration is too slow, attach a bulb to the top of the pipette. Gently squeeze the bulb to speed up the filtration and keep it squeezed until you take it off of the top of the pipette. Next, we will remove the solvent, ethyl acetate, either by heating up or rotary evaporation. Rotary evaporation increases the rate of evaporation of the solvent by being placed under a vacuum, which will reduce the pressure and lower the solvent boiling point, rotating the sample to increase the effective surface area, and heating up the solution using a water bath. After ethyl acetate is evaporated, the mixture slowly becomes oily. TBME, or methyl terbutyl ether, is added to help solidify the product. 
Collect the product with vacuum filtration. Confirm the obtained product using IR and melting point. And finish. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, we have visitor. Huh? Oh my gosh, oh, we even have, have a, a professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>